thank you so much, uh, Dave. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out. Yeah, thank you. You uh, like Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, I'm big Spider-Man fan. <laughs> Uh, the first uh, question that I uh, had for you is that within the um, MCU, um, all of the movies uh, feel like standalone movies, but also interconnected uh, to a bigger universe. Throughout the writing process, is it something where you write out your story first and then they say, hey, could you add this in? Could you give a nod to this? Or is that something that's talked about beforehand uh, within your writing process? Um, <laughs> without showing too much behind the curtain. In, in our case, we were invited to craft the story that we wanted to tell. And then what would happen is as we got deeper into the script and into, we realized, okay, well, this is gonna stay, that scene's gonna stay, we're actually gonna shoot this. That's when you might start getting nudges from the production team at Marvel saying, hey, could, could you change this location name to whatever, or, <laughs> or have a reference here to this character? Um, that said, I'm a huge MCU fan myself. I love these movies. I would say that whether or not I ever got a chance to work on one. So I was also coming in pretty hot asking, okay, just so I know, can I use this guy? Can I use this character? Can we go here? And usually the answer was, don't worry about that for now. But um, I was always asking. That's, that's just interesting because you have a character that has almost 50 years of, of comic book uh, history. And as a big comic book reader myself, you know, sometimes that history, you know, in the 70s, you know, doesn't work in, you know, 20, you know, 21. Uh, how much do you lean into the comic book history, but also try to make it a an updated story for the times that we're in right now? You've seen the movie, so, and, and you've probably read some of the books. It sounds like you're a big fan. Um, we didn't lean into a whole lot of the history of the comic books, because as you mentioned, the, the books, though I don't think this was malicious at the time, they were just developed at a time where the presentation of an Asian character was very different, and there's a lot of stereotypes inside of those books that we found, you know, very obviously problematic, and so Destin and I on day one, so we, we want to do this very badly. We want to put an Asian face on the screen. Mm -hmm. We do not want to do these specific characters or stories from the original books. Um, and if that's cool, then let's do it. And Marvel obviously understood and agreed, and they were very clear from the get-go anyway that they didn't want to do that either. So for us, it was, you know, what makes Shang-Chi special outside of the problematic stuff and the character and the relationship with his father, some of the characters you meet along the way, those are the things we, we pulled. You know, uh, the, one of the great things I thought about Black Panther is that you saw these Black characters, these Black superhero characters, royalty characters, but they were still relatable to all genres, races. And when I was watching the movie, you know, Shang-Chi is like, yes, you know, like you say, you want to have that Asian face, that representation, but it's such a cool movie just for, for everyone in your writing process. How do you kind of blend that fact that, hey, I want to show this something on the screen that maybe has never been seen before, but make it to where it doesn't really even matter who you are, where you came from. Like, this is a really good freaking movie for yeah. anybody to watch. Cool, man. Thank you. No, I, you know, without spoiling too much, I, I think um, we knew that we were going to go to pretty spectacular places as over the course of the movie, we were going to be pulling the audience into more and more amazing worlds, which is why it was really important to us that we opened the movie in a more grounded reality, which is essentially our world or the MCU world of 2026 or whatever year it is. <laughs> so that's why you see Shang-Chi working a day job and going out with friends at night and drinking and, and doing karaoke and stuff like that. Like, that to us was just as important because that's the life we live. That's the life that most Asian American young people I think are familiar with. And we wanted to say, hey, this guy is not just a space alien who could do amazing things. This is us, right? You know, the last question I had for you, and, and I'm a sucker for this. I'm all, always on YouTube looking at theories, looking oh, yeah. at what may happen, what, you know, could happen, what's the big fan theory, oh, it's Mephisto in this, you know, um, as people that are in the process, you guys really get into looking at those fan theories, and have you ever, like, seen something on there saying, hey, that's, that's not a bad idea, maybe I should incorporate that? No is the simple answer. <laughs> uh, first of all, Mephisto is not in this movie, so <laughs> no one needs to talk about that. Um, you know, it, when we were writing the movie we were writing for a period of time before they even announced the pro they had announced the project but then the big announcement at comic-con happened 
And even then, I think people just didn't have a sense enough of where, you know, keep in mind, like Endgame had just happened. So we didn't know where everything was headed. I don't think people were, I might, I bet I might be wrong, but I don't think people were out there thinking about what might happen in our movie. It wasn't until trailers start dropping and the Disney Plus shows started happening that I became really aware of how deep that rabbit hole goes. And that's when I did start seeing theories about what was gonna happen in our movie, at which point it was too late. We had already made the movie. So uh, we did not incorporate a lot, but I, I appreciate, and you know, look, I, I watch Loki and I spent hours online after every episode being like, what does this mean? So I love I love the, the what's behind it, you know? Well, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Like I said, the movie is is spectacular. Like mm-hmm. I like this is one of the the best Marvel movies that I've seen. It really is refreshing and it, it kind of pushes you into that next phase, like with the new character. So thank you very much. You did an excellent job. You should be very, very proud oh, of yourself. <laughs> Have a good thank one. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. No problem. <laughs> We're just warming you up for Spider-Man. <laughs> oh wow. That's gonna be crazy. I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything about that movie, just to be clear. Thank <laughs> you.